It's working, great. So, hello everyone, mm. I'm Mateusz, and I would like to present you some of my experience from implementing the behavior-driven development in Silius. And maybe some two warm-up questions at the beginning for you. Uh, behavior-driven development, who uses it? Okay, who uses it properly? So, okay, so maybe easier question. Who knows Celius? More people, great. Okay. And uh, who uses Celius in their dev everyday work? Still a lot, great. Yeah, so because I was involved and I'm still involved in Celius for already eight or nine years, I don't even count right now, uh, I hope I will be able to share my experience with you and uh, tell you what behavior-driven development actually is, and maybe more important, what it isn't. But let's start with quantum physics. Uh, quantum physics, this is really important regarding BDD. So in quantum physics, there is a, this is the field of the science when we have the bunch of theories that work pretty well on the really low level of reality. So when we are talking about particles, about quarks, or something like this, we have a lot of rules that work really good there, and this is called quantum physics, mostly quantum mechanism. And we have the general relativity, which was, of course, developed by Albert Einstein and developed even more from this side. And the problem with these two parts of physics is that uh, they don't work with each other at all. Like, this is a really big problem because we have some theories that work really good in a really low level of the reality. We have some theories that work really good for big masses objects, but something between is missing. And uh, as you can expect, this is really important, like maybe not in our day-to-day uh, day -day life, but at the end for our scientific development as a civilization, this is quite important to find something like this. This question mark is called, should be called something like ultimate theory or final theory or fear of everything. And behavior-driven development is something on some level of abstraction that is such a theory of everything for the development processes. But ob yeah, obviously we are not talking about quarks or atoms, we are not talking about black holes, we are not talking about the microphone that is not working. Uh, we are talking about uh, two areas uh, in which we have the development process working pretty well. So this is, I broke that here. I fixed that. Uh, so we are one, uh, talking about business professionals and developers. So about the behavior driven development, there is a lot of misconceptions. Like there is a lot of things that we think about behavior develop development and de behavior develop driven development. I will be calling BDD. It's shorter. Uh, actually, it isn't. Uh, and some of these misconceptions are closer to the reality, some of them are further to, to the reality. At the beginning of my work with Celius General and General with programming, because working with Celius was my first, uh, actually the real job as a programmer, so almost all my, all my entire life as developer I spent with Celius. Uh, when I started to work with it and I was told that there is something like test-driven development and behavior-driven development, my first uh, recognition of this topic is, okay, so test-driven development is uh, like more technical and behavior-driven development is like TDD, but with different naming. Or uh, then when I was uh, learning a lot, lot more about this topic, it was like, okay, so behavior-driven development is like TDD, but for testing UI. It's not entirely true uh, at, uh, as well. Is it a better TDD? 
you can say so that this is a better TDD because it evolves this process of test-driven development and making it um, more wholesome for the whole development process. Um, and I like the, I like the, um, uh, the term that this is TDD on steroids. It is, but uh, it isn't in the same time. I will be talking a bit about it during the presentation. Here I summed up some uh, some uh, sentences, some uh, some sentences that says what BDD is. Mm, they are from uh, from websites like from the Cucumber or from the website of the creator of the BDD, Dandorf, uh, from the website of Invica, and you can see that in these um, in these definitions we don't see anything about tests. We don't see anything about UI or something like this. What we see as the information about a way of work, about the process that is happening, about improving the communication, about uh, having some kind of methodology. And this is something that is really important that we need to think that behavior-driven development is not about testing, which is surprising. It can be surprising. It was surprising for me. Uh, because actually, when we're thinking about test-driven development, test-driven development, of course, is about testing because it's called test-driven development. And uh, about behavior-driven development, a lot of people, a lot of programmers are thinking that we are basing some tests on some, maybe some higher level, but generally, it's more about mostly about writing tests, uh, maybe in some higher level of abstraction for the UI or for integration tests or something like this, or writing the scenarios. But this is not exactly the thing. The behavior-driven develop, behavior development, it tries to improve the communication between the business professional and technical people, and uh, using tests or automatic tests, UI tests, uh, user stories, all of these things, these are just the tools. These, these are all just the way to reach the goal that behavior development have uh, ahead of us. So this is not the necessary part of the, uh, of the process, of the methodology. It just happened that it, it's working good way in, uh, in this way, yeah. Uh, about the problems of behavior-driven development that I saw during the years that I'm involved in Celios is that at first sight, the behavior-driven development is complex. Like it's much more complex than that is test-driven development. And even if we don't use TDD, it's conceptually simple. So generally, we are thinking about um, writing tests, but we are writing them at the beginning, not at the end of the development process. So this is easy. Like this is something that, as a programmers, uh, as people that generally think quite technically, we are uh, we have no problems with uh, comprehensive. Yeah? Uh, generally, the idea of testing is quite uh, quite easy to understand. Uh, this is the disclaimer, but this is really a nice example of how why testing is important. I don't know. Do you know this game? I don't know it. It's called uh, Alien Colonial Marines, and I, as far as I read, it was rubbish. Uh, but uh, it was rubbish for one 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 of the reasons for that was that the aliens that should be highly developed uh, space creatures that are highly intelligent and or, all the things. They were just really stupid in the game. And one of the modders that were creating some mod for the game, uh, he realized that there was some kind of the ty typo in one of the variables in the game. And he changed this typo because obviously there's a typo, we need to change it. And this one little problem resulted in the whole different Mm, whole different behavior of the aliens uh, enemies they were uh, finally really smart they were flanking enemies they were like attacking coordinate coordination uh, attacks they that was like i don't know exactly i know but i don't want to talk about it because it will be too much uh, what is exactly the problem but the problem that what i would like to show you and you already see it that even the simplest test would probably detect this problem and would probably not uh, make the people of the creators of the game to lose a lot of money. Um, and obviously, the game dev is another part of the story because when you are uh, in the game developer, probably you don't think too much about testing because the, like this is a different level of 
uh, being the developer, like not maybe this level, but this level, D different topic, yeah? But generally, you know what I mean. Uh, and this whole TDD cycle about making the test that is not passing and then making the, making the test, test that is passing and refactoring it, this is something that we comprehend pretty well. Which is not the point with the business, uh, with the behavior driven development, because behavior develop, dev, development, it requires communication. And communication for a lot of us is quite hard. Uh, more, the behavior, de behavior driven development needs a goal, but not just any goal. It needs to be a smart goal, and it's actually an acronym. It needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Which is another level that gives us like the, the impression that this is really hard and this is really complex that we need to do something like this. Because in test-driven development, again, this is quite simple. We know that we would like to write the test that specifies some kind of the technical requirements. We implement it, done. When in behavior-driven development, we need to think about some kind of the higher goal for not only for the this specific thing that we are working on right now, but for the whole application itself, um, which is, again, usually something that we don't want to care about. Uh, I would say that behavior development in an oversimplified way is that the test driven development, but is focused on why, why we are doing something. And again, if we are doing something as a programmers, we are simple creatures. We would like just to sit down, write a code, have fun from that, that's all. We don't want to think about reasons. These reasons are usually really important for the business professionals. Uh, and behavior-driven development is the methodology that is uh, telling us, you programmers, you are the part of the development process. You are not some different kind of, uh, kind of creatures, different species that is just working some, somewhere in the basement and does not have any relation to the business world. We actually do, because the code that we are creating, the code we are producing, actually needs to, um, needs to fulfill these business requirements that we have from the top. And usually, at least from my experience, but we can talk a little bit about it later, is that a lot of bad things that are happening in the development process, a lot of things that are bad, bad things that are happening during the um, the development of the application is the misunderstanding between the requirements, the business requirements, and the technical people. And it's obviously not that, like, I'm telling that only technical people make mistakes. Obviously not. <laughs> like, uh, I had heard the, uh, the sentence that uh, generally, of course, we can be worried about the AI, chat GPT, and everything that will be taking over our work as a programmers. But to do that, to replace programmers with AI, uh, business people would actually need to um, tell clearly about the requirements. So we are, we are clear, we are fine. <laughs> um, we don't have to worry about anything. This, the, other, the other problem that is, that is with uh, behavior development is that from my perspective, it's at the first sight too natural. What do I, do I mean? This is the scenario that is uh, used, that is written in the Gherkin language. It's then parsed with the BHAT tool, that is uh, the PHP port of the Cucumber tool. And it's used, it's, it's something like a user story. The requirement from the business point of view, what the application should do. This is actually taken from Celius, obviously. And uh, when we already know how it works, it's OK. So we have some kind of the background. We have some kind of the scenario of uh, what is happening in, this, uh, in the application. But at the first sight, when we are just new to the project and jump into the, to something like this, the first question is, where is the code? Where is the code? What the hell is this? Like, this is some kind of the story. I don't want to talk about it. Like, I, want, I would like to write the code, especially as in Silius, we had this um, habit that could be annoying a little bit for people, that whenever someone is opening the pull request, because Sirius obviously is open source project, we are telling, great, that's a good, that's a good change. But can you write a behead scenario for that? Please write a behead scenario. Can you please write a behead scenario? If you don't mind writing the behead scenario. 
obviously it can be frustrating. I would say that from maybe from our side, it was a little bit um, not a good choice of co the communication, but uh, at the end, uh, there is a joke that I don't finish the computer science to talk to people and uh, bless you. And, uh, and, and yeah, and this is the approach that a lot of the programmers have. Mm. And it's not bad, it's not good. It's just the way of, as we usually see the, uh, the work of the programmer. This is changing, obviously. This is one of the reasons why, I, why I'm talking about it to you, that a lot of people, a lot of programmers, but also business professionals see that this change is needed, but not for everyone. Another problem with the behavior-driven development is that we can see a lot, really a lot of bad examples of usage. And uh, not only about what actually behavior-driven driven, behavior -driven development, this is really hard, sorry. BDD, of what actually BDD is, um, but also about the bad examples of usage of the tools um, that we can use, for example, in PHP. There was a part uh, of time in the Silius life when our BHAT scenarios were, it, that, that was a nightmare. Like it was a long time ago, we rewritten our scenarios a lot, but after the first site, if you take a look at this, this is, this is, this is something that is not um, understandable at the first site, neither for the technical or for the business people. Obviously, these scenarios should in the real, like in the perfect world, this scenario should be something like the living documentation of the application. And someone who has no idea about the code should read the scenario and know what the application actually do. This is now how we should write these scenarios. Uh, they are really technical, like they're focusing on the specific uh, UI parts of the application, we have some things like I fill the following fields, I press login, we have some tables with some background. Most of this data is actually not needed for these scenarios, but they need to be there because of them, some technical difficulties. So that was a nightmare. Uh, we changed that, obviously, but that was the bad example of usage, the BDD-related tool, uh, that we should definitely not do that. And there is more. We can even see that we have some, I would consider, bad examples of usage of BDD in the uh, documentation of the BHAT that is uh, presenting itself as the tool for behavior-driven development. And I would not say that this is something that is uh, incorrect. This is the correct usage of BHAT, but this is definitely not behavior-driven development because these are strictly technical things. Um, I talked today with Loic uh, about that, that uh, there is no bad thing in use it, like the BHAT is only, this is only the tool, we can use it in any way that we want, and it is as good as the programmer that is using it. So when we are using it for uh, checking, uh, checking our API calls or uh, console commands or anything like this, that's fine if it works for us, but definitely it will not be behavior-driven development. Because again, behavior-driven development is not about specific tool, it's about uh, the methodology, the process of improving the communication within the, uh, within the team. And at the end, if we see something like this and we think, why should I even bother using BHAT if I can do something like this in PHP unit? This is the obvious choice. Usually, and we are also talking about it today, that uh, when using some fancy tool that is not really recognized within the whole PHP community, but is a little bit of a niche, uh, and uh, we need to we need to think about it that a lot of the people would not would not like to use it because they think that they can do such a similar thing uh, with a different tool, and. With usage BHAT in a wrong way, not doing the proper behavior-driven development with that, but doing some technical testing, we can actually uh, show the people that there is no need to use that if you can do it with the PHP unit, for example. That's the random example of this. So the scenario that is properly written, I think maybe not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than it was before. First of all, it's a lot simpler is something that 
uh, can be easily read by someone who has no idea about the code itself. I, I, I think that we can agree that if some product owner or some CEO, I don't know about the C levels. C, C, CEO is the one that is not technical. Yeah, CTO is technical. Okay, so CEO is going to our is going to uh, to our desk and say, let's show me about what this application is actually doing. We can show it him or her the uh, the scenario, and this is understandable for someone who is not who do doesn't know the code. Mm. And but obviously this is also the higher level of um, the steeper uh, learning curve for us as developers because we are used to technical things. I would say that starting with BDD is much harder, like starting with the proper BDD is much harder than starting with the test-driven development. Because of, because of all these things that I have been already talking about regarding um, the requirement of thinking about the goal of the application, the requirement of thinking about the business needs of the application, and this is not only something that Business people need to think about, but we also need to think about as programmers because we are actually fulfilling them. This learning curve is a lot, uh, a lot bigger. And basing on the example that I know the best, which is Silius, I can also say that jumping into the project that already is using some behavior and different development that is already using the uh, BDD related tools is also quite hard. I will show you the analog. Uh, when we start learning chess, we learn about how the pieces move and about some simple tactics that you can do this way and then do attack both uh, the queen and the king in the same time, or you can do something like this, which is, I don't know how it is, this maneuver is called in English, but this is really important like, to know something like this. This is quite simple, so we can understand quite well when we, uh, when we see these examples, uh, what are the benefits of using them of the, these techniques. But then we start with the uh, beginning of the board and we don't know nothing, what, what we need to do. We have no idea because we cannot use any of these techniques that we used before. And of course, there are some other techniques, some chess openings that you can use. You can, you can learn the schemas that will improve your skills at the beginning of the game, and then you can use these tactics that you used before. But this is uh, really confusing and can be over overwhelming at the beginning of jumping into the project that, well, I don't know what to do. And the same thing can be with uh, the project like Silius. Uh, even though this is the PHP spec, so the other tool, this is the example that uh, we can see that at the beginning, it could be overwhelming, bless you again. Um, at the beginning, it could be overwhelming because we are seeing low, a lot of functions that we don't know what to do. Like there's, there is, if we are used to, for example, the PHP unit, uh, this PHP spec can be confusing, not natural at the beginning, even though, again, conceptually, it's quite simple. It's just telling us what this test is testing. If it's a test or not, I would, I would uh, elaborate about that because from my point of view, the tests are only the side effect of uh, doing the specifications of the PHP spec, but this is the topic for another, uh, conf uh, another conference, another presentation. So it's saying as to what does it do, what kind of variables are coming, uh, that some method will return something and some other methods should be called easy. But at the beginning, at the first sight, it's not so easy. And we need someone who will be guiding us through this development, through this learning process. And again, there are not a lot of people that truly understand what BDD should be and what kind of tools we should use and how we should use them. Mm. I'm going back to the scenario that we already saw is uh, that when you would like to use it in a uh, in a technical way, so we would like to use it for the automatic tests. Uh, Again, it's quite easy at the beginning because we can get the, the get the step and just translate to the PHP code. Simple, yeah. And I had this, I had this approach that I was thinking, why you are not doing it? Like, 
all the people that are not using Bihat, why are you not doing this? This is so simple, this is so elegant, just do it. But then I realized that when you come to a project like Celius and you see something like this, then you need to realize, okay, is that, but this is somehow automatically taken from some another function, and this is taken from some another level of abstraction, and this is also setting in something that is called some shared storage. What the hell is that? This is overwhelming. This is really overwhelming at the beginning. It is overwhelming in the midterm. This is really hard to jump into the big BDD project and understand it like in the fly. Especially when you take a look at the project like Celius that is really big. It's, it's really big, there's a lot of classes, and you can think like, okay, I would like to contribute to Celius because this is an open source project. I would like to contribute, but these guys are talking to me about some tests, some BDD, PHP spec, BHAT scenarios. What the hell is that? Where should I start? Where should I start? There's a plenty of classes, plenty of catalogs. I don't know what to, what to do, but it can be worse. I can, you can already know some things about BDD and would like to start it with your new project. And it's even worse because you also don't know what to do because this is the empty project. This need of educational materials regarding the behavior-driven development, but not only this methodology, but I'm talking about it right now, I think that this is one of the biggest problems of BDD, that people don't actually know what they can expect from using tools like BHAT or PHP spec. Mm. I would say that it's okay, that it's hard to start because I would say that mm, if something is hard, probably it's valuable. Like maybe it's it's the it's the heuristic. Obviously, it does not always uh, it's not always the truth. But I would just start that, say that generally, when we, something is hard to do, maybe it's worth to do that. Uh, so it's not bad that it's hard, but we need just to realize that, and we don't need to blame anyone to, who is not doing that. Uh, probably behavior development, development is not for every project. If we don't have the business requirements, then probably we don't need to use the BDD. If we are talking about some simple, uh, simple uh, things like doing, this is obviously some technical, really technical uh, function of doing some bubble sort of some com uh, configuration. With all of these things, we would probably not like to approach it with a BDD way. We would not like to use some BDD tools with that. And again, this is also good. This is, this is also good because the only thing that we need is to um, use the proper tools and the proper methodologies for the problems that we need to solve. Okay, so let's say right now that um, you already know Celius and would like to contribute and would like to do some uh, BDD approach with it, but you have a problem. You don't like PHP spec. Actually, you have one of the core team members in Celius that really don't like PHP spec. I think that all, already two of them. Most of us like it, but uh, generally at, at least two of guys really don't like it. And again, this is not the problem. I think that this is one of the biggest, I, I repeat it the first time, but be, I, I, for me, this is really important because I wanted to say that this is the biggest lie about BDD. Lie is a really hard work, word, but I would say that. Uh, that we think that doing BDD is using the proper tools. That because BHAT is for BDD, then if you are doing BDD, you need to use BHAT and you need to use the PHP spec. Not at all. These are only, only tools and it also works in the other way. So if we are using BHAT and PHP spec, it does not exactly mean that we are doing BDD. Uh, doing BDD. And it's also good. Like that, that really important thing regarding what BDD teaches us is to be conscious about what we are doing in our project and to consciously use some proper tools uh, to achieve our goals, the goals that we were talking about uh, previously. So we can say that BDD is not really cool because I already said about a lot of the problems that it makes, but from my idea it really is but you need to think about the other benefits that is giving you. I know, Oliver, that I'm already lining out of time. I'm really hurry. <laughs> Sorry for that. I just talk too much. 
it speeds up the development. And it can be a con controversial a little bit because at the end, every test-driven development methodology uh, makes you more, more, more work, yeah? Because you need to write tests. And if you don't write tests, you just have less, less, uh, less uh, work to do. But I can show you the example. I saw it on one of the website that uh, there, was a, there was a guy who was really known with the TDD approach, and he was making the, himself the, uh, the practice of making some code kata with translating Arabic, uh, not Arabic, uh, Roman numbers to the Arabic uh, numbers. Doesn't matter. It was some kind of the problem that he wanted to solve. And actually for him, he um, he showed in the, um, with some few trials that with, without TDD, he, he, it was making him longer work to do than with TDD. But obviously, it needs to, we need to think about it that this guy already knew how to do TDD stuff. And if you already know how to do TDD and VDD, it will improve our work, obviously, and speed it up, but not at the beginning. So my sentence is that, it does not speed, the BDD does not speed up the development, but it speeds up delivering the reliable value, the reliable value that we actually would like to deliver. Uh, not maybe, maybe the whole development process, like the initial coding will not be uh, shorter, but the development process of fixing the bugs and improving everything that is uh, next, it will probably be much shorter with the BDD approach. And it's really important that, contrary to the uh, test-driven development that is strictly technical, BDD also improves the process both businessly and technically. This is what I was already talking about, that uh, regarding the tools that we are using, um, the, the approach, the methodology that we are using, we have the better understanding between the business and technical professionals. And because of that, uh, that we have a better understanding, we uh, require less translations. Obviously, the translation is the process where we always can lose something. And we would like to minimize the translation between business and technical professionals as much as possible. Uh, BDD also makes you, um, makes you uh, benefit from something that we call cognitive diversity, because all of the people that are included in the project, in the project are um, actually involved in the whole development process, not only its specific technical part, but also some business requirements, all of this stuff. We can use the, the intelligence, the, uh, the cognitivity of all of the people that are involved in the project. So it makes you, uh, from time to time, it makes us uncomfortable, especially that when we are a manager and we see it's a war, so the programmer will be able to tell me what to do. But actually, from time to time, these programmers also have good ideas about how the business should work. And this is good, generally. This is good for the application itself. I was already talking about it, that the behavior-driven development, when imply, implied properly, uh, as I hope we do it in Celius, results in a really nice example of leaving documentation. These scenarios that I showed you before, we have plenty of them. You can take a look at them. At, this, uh, at, the, at the features uh, features catalog in the Celius repository. There is a lot of them, and this kind of documentation has, has some really benefit over the normal uh, documentation. It's always up to date. It cannot be not up to date because then the build would be failing, and we don't want the build to be failing. So it's not perfect, obviously, but it's much better than from the presenting what actually is happening in the application, probably there is much more information in such a documenta documentation in the uh, form of scenarios than the documentation in the form of the documentation. Um, and from my perspective, uh, being involved in such a project is that I have not found yet another so reliable way of um, ensuring the safety and no regression in our application, like with the habit that we already have of doing this test-driven, behavior-driven approach of writing the test all the time when we see the bug and going from up to down from the business requirements to the technical problems, we see that we have much less problems with 
um, with the bugs that would bump up in the future that we don't solve actually and we solve in the, in the moment when they need to be solved. Uh, and the really good thing is that when you are doing behavior-driven development, you, it's not like you are doing BDD and that's all, and you are not doing anything else. Obviously, it's it's really well coexist with all other agile methodologies, with uh, Scrum, with uh, domain-driven design, with event storming, a lot of the things uh, that can be combined together uh, when in, when they are used consciously, then they can just improve the development process. And BDD can be just the core of this of the system of the methodology that you are using in your development application. And the coding experience is great. Like, really, I, I, for the years that I have been working with Celius, I, I think that I have only few moments when I uh, thought that, oh my god, I don't want to code anymore, this is rubbish. Like, th th this was like maybe three or four, five mo moments in my life. All the other time, I was really happy that I'm going to work and I'm coding. And I, obviously, there were challenges. And obviously, this is just the one example. And it can be just, I can be just lucky that we have this, uh, we, have, we have this opportunity to create actually a good looking application. But maybe this is the case. And that's all. I'm Mateusz, and I'm uh, working in Commerce Weavers. I'm co-founder of the agency, and for the last years, I have been then uh, the part of the Celius core team. And if you would like to ask me about anything about BDD, but also other things about Celius, I'm available after the presentation because we already don't have a time for questions, unfortunately. Uh, if you would like to uh, share some feedback, uh, here is the code that you can scan. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. It was a pleasure to do it for you. We just have two minutes for one or two questions. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, regarding BIAT and the features file, is the the code required to to execute and define the the execution the logic execution for those feature files uh, too complex with time with all uh, those different uh, examples regarding the current code base? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, if I understand you correctly, you are asking about does the core code getting too complex over the time when we are doing it? Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, obviously it does, like every code. But we had the um, problem with our previous Behat system that we had uh, always taken care about the good coding experience in the application itself. But for some reason, we didn't take care about in the in the test suite, and that was a nightmare doing anything with that. So the test code in the all test-driven methodologies like TDD and BDD, this is just the, another part of your application and you should treat it as any other part of the application and if you are doing it with the proper uh, coding coding style and practices and all of this stuff it will still get worse and worse over the time but you can control it somehow so obviously this is a problem especially when we have so many scenarios and we have plenty of context this these files that are containing the mapping of the steps to PHP code, and they have another level of abstraction of the page object, and then they are operating on some HTML elements. And there are billions of these classes. Obviously, this is a problem, but I would say that this is a problem that we can handle, and it is much better problem to handle than the problem of not having the test suite at all, or, not ha or having it badly written. I hope it answers your question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mateusz. Yeah, thank you very much. One more thing.